Hi everyone and welcome to The Good Woo. So I'm talking about the energy of Mars, the planet Mars, and masculine energy at its core in its most symbolic level. And what we have, it started actually yesterday on the 27th, we have a six month phase ahead of us, which includes the power of these eclipses, these three eclipses that we have experienced, and the third one is July 4th and 5th, depending on where you are in the world. Those eclipses are gonna have far-reaching power for the next six months, but aligned with them, so to speak, is also Mars, the planet of will, drive, masculinity, um, aggression, war, conflict, sex, in some ways power, but it's more like how we access power, how we go get power. Um, this planet is in the sign of Aries. Now, if you're not familiar with astrology, I'll just briefly, ble briefly run this down for you guys. Aries is ruled by Mars. So the fact that Mars ha is in the sign of Aries means that it is even more powerful. So we have six months of this. Now, normally Mars only stays in a sign as it goes through the zodiac for a few weeks, but Mars is going to be retrograde, specific, I'm going to get specific with you guys. It goes retrograde on the 9th of September through November 13th. And because of that, as it, it's moving forward in the sky and then it moves backward and then it has to move forward again, it's six months in the sign of Aries. And as it makes this journey of forward and backwards and forward, it will be squaring the planet Jupiter and squaring Saturn and squaring Pluto, who are all in the signs of Capricorn. Now, you can throw all of that jargon away and let's just talk about what does this mean? How can you use it? How, how can you uh, use it to improve your life? And how can you mitigate any negative effects that it could have? So, while the last time that Mars had this kind of retrograde in Aries and this, this long six month phase in Aries was in 1943. So we can sort of look to that year to see what was going on. Um, but more importantly, I wanna talk about what happens with Mars when we aren't aware of the anger that we have accumulated when the anger that we've accumulated is the shadow part of ourselves right it's been rejected so i don't know about you when i was growing up expressing anger was a no-no even though the adults in my life were free to express it and in violent ways so i grew up with a, a weird relationship with anger definitely we all have it but i didn't know how to express it appropriately you know oftentimes when this happens in childhood the anger is turned inwards and what we get is depression right a suppressed anger is what depression technically is so now that mars is in aries there is going to be a, a drive an impetus to take action, to uh, make your dreams real by doing. It's the action and doing and assertiveness. Now the problem that we have right now is as much as we wanna do and go and expand and achieve, we're all at different layers of shelter in place and lockdown and uh, we may be going back into even, you know, even more lockdowns because of the second wave of everything that's happening. So. This could be quite frustrating. And you know, 2020 has not been a year for relationships. It has been very difficult for relationships. The Venus retrograde definitely showed us what friendships and relationships are working, what's not, how we're communicating is working and how it's not. So the fact that we have this time with Mars and Aries, it could just lead to a lot of frustration. Not only that, but as it squares these big planets of Saturn and Jupiter, which Saturn is like, restrictions, boundaries, 
the government because it's placed in Capricorn. So it's restrictions and boundaries created by the government which are going to be squaring this Mars and Aries. So it's like your desire to get moving, to make things happen is going to be restricted by these governmental boundaries, lockdowns, restrictions. Now, it also squares Jupiter three times. So I'm gonna give you some of these dates. Remember Mars goes retrograde from September 9th through November 13th. And this is important because you don't want to start a fight during this time, right? Because if you throw the first punch, your opponent is going to like demolish you. That's the way this Mars retrograde works, the energy works. So don't start none from the 9th of September till November 13th, especially like legal situations. You start a legal situation in Mars retrograde and you're the initiator, you will lose even if you're right. So this is history, patterns upon patterns, you know, hundreds of years we've been able to follow these patterns. Now, the three squares with Jupiter are August 4th, October 19th, and January 23rd. Now, there are some people that believe that when we're working with Jupiter, even if it's a square, which is a tense aspect, right? A square needs action. It, it needs some sort of movement to get out of the frustration. It, it makes you reach and grow but it can't be conflictual. So with Jupiter, I feel like these squares on August 4th, October 19th, and January 23rd, and you know, the energy is playing the whole time. It's just, this is when these, these points are exact. This is when Mars and Jupiter are exactly square. So these days may offer some sort of information to you and for you. When Jupiter is squaring Mars, there's an element of Jupiter expands, right? It's the biggest planet. It expands everything. It's like the Santa Claus energy. And this could go either way. This could go, um, your Mars energy just gets totally out of control. You can say things you don't mean, violence, war. You know, this is when we're looking at the collective consciousness. That's how it can sort of look like this expansion of the Mars energy, a blow up of the Mars energy. But it can also be because Jupiter is this planet of luck. It could be like the action steps that you're taking, specifically if it's things like for your career, creative endeavors, when you're, if you're aligned with really truly trying to make your life better in a benevolent, altruistic way, then these squares can actually be quite profitable. Now the squares with Saturn are on August 24th, September 29th, and January 13th. So the squares with Saturn are different because Saturn is, if we think of Jupiter as like the kind father, well, Saturn is more like the, the disciplinarian, very serious energy. And we've been in Saturnville, so to speak, for a couple of years now. Saturn's been very, very powerful in the sky. So these squares to Mars and Saturn, it, inevitably what it means is that your desire for forward movement in your life and whatever area Mars is in your chart, and we can talk about that at the end of this video, but it means that Saturn is gonna come in and be like, uh-uh, you have to do what, I'm, uh, what I say. And this, of course, is gonna bring frustration. And in the collective, this could look like the public being very upset, violence, you know, possibly more riots, you know, people getting so frustrated by whatever lockdown or restrictions that the government is is giving that it incites warlike energy. How it looks like in your life is, you know, you can use these squares between Mars and Saturn in a very productive way. And, and this is how. Where Mars is in your chart, and if you need help looking at your astrological charts, please book a session with me. I have a sliding scale. Um, usually I suggest that clients do a sacred sitting, which is a two hour long reading. But if you, you're really interested and you really wanna get on top of like these transits that are happening this year, we can do like a, an hour session and, and look at them so you know specifically what areas of your life are going to be directly affected by these kind of transits. So, Mars to get to get the good end of Mars energy because when it comes to any 
entity or consciousness and and I do believe that that planets have souls just like humans have souls like the planet earth has a consciousness a soul and it's not like human consciousness it may be even broader but the the energy as above so below is affecting everything that everything affects everything because everything is connected so Mars to really get good with Mars energy you have to have an exercise routine you have to have an engagement with your physicality that exerts the extra fire so we're talking about an excess of fire and what do you do with it working out sweating uh, martial arts really taking time to think before you act and it's going to be difficult in these six months you're gonna want to fly off the handle you're gonna want to go for the you know the jugular think 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 pause 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 before you text email answer the phone reply even reply to someone face to face um, Mars energy is also because it rules sex it's important that we're moving our sexual energy through our body and this can look like you know many different things uh, masturbation if you have a partner then this is like you know you your sex drive may increase and that could actually because of these squares it could alter and change your partnership if your partner isn't on the same page all of this is up for discussion it's better to be open about it now with all of this Mars happening and especially before the September 9th retrograde because when it hits retrograde you will have wanted these issues to have been expressed and explored before that because things can get really muddled during the Mars retrograde because the Mars energy is is almost, it's like it's internalized but it's also because of these squares it's just it can we're, we're just not sure what it's gonna do so this idea of sexual energy also being creative energy so the idea of using art and why I say that in particular is because our beautiful planet Venus is going to be overseeing she's gonna be making connections to all three of these planets as these squares are happening so we do have this grace and outlet when it comes to creativity and art and expressing yourself creatively to move some of this angst and frustration and agitation and anger out now let's see um, so it's interesting that, uh, that we have some other times in history where this this retrograde was prominent one was in 1783 which was the ending of the Revolutionary War when the Treaty of Paris was signed by England and the United States of America and so there is something about this energy and the way that Saturn and Jupiter are playing in with this Mars where the worst could be mitigated there could actually be an ending of what we call war and and that could be you know sort of this this war that's been ongoing uh in the in the middle east with america and these countries um with the western world in those countries the next time was 1578 which is when uh english colonizers landed in canada so technically kind of like what would be like the first thanksgiving so to speak and then now here we are in 2020 having the same energy so everything is very aligned as far as the United States is concerned for some sort of big momentous <sighs> breakthrough and I think you know we already kind of we're, we're sensing and and this week actually we're gonna be sensing more of what that could be about um, there's a part of me that thinks this is gonna be uh, about the Second Amendment in some way um, because of the history of when this Mars retrograde you know has been happening um, let's see anything else here I want to give a shout out to SJ Anderson one of the most amazing astrologers out there right now I got some of this information from his incredible research that actually uh, there's also this Mars retrograde in July 64 CE and that was when Rome burned so 
you see that there's this energy of fire, right? And and how we use it is so important. So there's going to be this area of where Aries is in your chart that Mars is going to be going through, right? It's going to be going forward and backward and forward, pounding out. So if you have any planets in your chart that are in Aries, like for me, I have Mars and Venus and some other placements in Aries, Mars is going to be hitting all those planets. So so you can see like there's the collective where Mars is is in Aries for 6 months squaring Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto three times. Big 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 changes. But this is also happening for you in your personal life. So where Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter are right now is in the sign of Capricorn. So that's the other place of your life where this change is going to be happening. So where Aries and Capricorn are, they're making this square and it's going to make you have to shift and move. And we want to be accessing the highest vibrational energies of any cosmic weather. So a way that we can do that where it comes to the Capricorn house is understand and accept that there are going to be restrictions that you are going to have to abide by, whether you agree with them or not. And how can you do it in a way where you have acceptance so that it doesn't increase your you know, agitation and your irritation and your anger? Where Capricorn is in your chart right now is where discipline will serve you, where everything being by the book. It's where contracts, personal contracts, whether that's a marriage or um, you know, co-parenting or contracts that you have in work that you can't get out of, that that sense of constriction and the ball and chain there's vital juicy knowledge and learning there there's wisdom to gain from these restrictions and they're not going to be there forever it's just right now we're really going to be feeling the heat that those restrictions could create so wearing red wearing red underwear right uh I, I don't paint my nails anymore but for females it's like the color red red lipstick red nails you just want to give this mars and aries an outlet right so this is like you know ven it's like for females building muscle uh getting getting really fit getting fit uh like apocalyptic fit <laughs> like um really making preparations for when things do lift right so you have this six months to like take as much action as you can you're gonna have some blockages but knowing keeping in mind that this is all gonna shift it's not always gonna be this way and you will get to move forward on these things that you're so passionate about so when it comes to passion this is another part of it you want to find an outlet for this passion right for this aggressive passion that we're going to be feeling and yes for some of us it's going to be activism but if you're not an activist at heart and that's not the way you serve this collective healing then find another way to really use this energy that could look like agitation and anger to use it to fuel you because if we use anger as fuel rather than as you know, like rather than throwing gasoline on other people or, or conflict in our life. Instead, we take the anger, we acknowledge it, right? We, we use it constructively, whether that's the two minute tango, and I'll post that here, where you literally go through, it's like you're acting, but what you're actually doing is releasing the body, allowing the body to express these deeper and, and more extreme feelings that we all have, that we're all sitting on on some level. With Mars and Aries, it's like the push-ups, you know, having insight and relief while you're exerting your physical body. And also like writing letters to people who are angering you, whether that's like the president or like your mother. And writing, writing, writing exactly what you think and feel, you know, explicatives, whatever than taking it and burning it. And even more potent, instead of using a lighter, use a match. Because um, Mar Aries represents the match, the, the initial fire energy. So another way that this, is, this is, can help you is to actually work with fire. Like if you are lucky enough to be out and you can have a bonfire, to really allow, you know, imagine that you are sending 
all of the anger and frustration into that fire. Now you can do it with a candle flame as well. And you imagine the fire purifying, purifying your intent. And that leads me to, you know, after this sort of sedentary period that this first six months of the year is, it's like this is the opposite. This energy is like, you're gonna wanna run a marathon, you know? And there's, you, you want to listen to it because if we suppress this energy, that's where depression comes in. So there is some, you know, techniques when it comes to dealing with anger you not just the two minute tango, although the two minute tango does include screaming into a pillow, which I highly recommend, you know, without hurting your voice. Um, if maybe I need to make a video on how to do that without hurting your larynx, but this idea of who is the warrior within and getting to know this archetype of the warrior, Mars and Aries is the warrior. It is. You know, if we look through the history of time, this would be a great exercise to do and look at all like the different visual images of warrior. And then really think about like, what does warrior mean to you? And what are you going to be warrior for in your life? And I just, first of all, I, I wanna say, I want us to start with ourselves, that we are gonna be a warrior for our inner child. So there is a great meditation that I'm actually gonna record for us where we're going to meet our inner warrior and our inner, more, our inner warrior and one of our inner children will also meet and form a relationship so that this energy can be tied to our deepest heart-centered space because you don't wanna do anything you're gonna regret. And when frustration from restriction comes down, you wanna be able to, you know, cultivate a portal for yourself where you can be like, yes, I'm so frustrated, but look at how I use it constructively to better my life, to better my relationships, to better my health. So things that won't mix well with this, uh, for instance, like sobriety is going to be very beneficial right now. And, and dare I say, even lucrative because this element of Saturn in this discipline, 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 squaring this fiery burst forth, you know, wanting to fight, that fire is going to be mitigated by the discipline that you take. So discipline being also like what we put in our body. So discipline can be what you put in your body, how you treat your body, the workouts, the exercise, drink a ton of water, right? Because one of the ways we can, you know, deal with an excess of heat and fire is to drink water. Also eating cucumbers, that's a big one, which we can all do this summer. Better yet, like make a big pitcher of ice water, slice some cucumbers, put it in there. Even the herb mint is gonna be very soothing. Peppermint, spearmint, eucalyptus, you get it, right? You wanna sort of balance it with cooling energies. Things that are gonna exacerbate it are like alcohol, sugar, um, even like smoking because really you're taking more heat into your body. Okay, any other tips? Let's see, any other tips? Nature, walking in nature, being in nature is also going to be an incredible way to soothe and to actually sit or stand in bare feet on the earth or on the sand or in the ocean and imagine the earth or the ocean taking the excess heat, taking the anger, taking the frustration, taking the agitation away. And then you can imagine that once it's taken all of that away, you can imagine the ocean, you can imagine it literally, the energy of the ocean, imagine in your mind's eye that you're sucking it in to your solar plexus center and that healing, flowing, massively powerful, cooling water energy is literally like going up to the top of your head and down to the bottom of your feet and like swirling in and around you. And of course the earth energy, if, it's, if you're not by the ocean, just allowing that earth energy to come up into your feet, into your body, softening, you know, think about that loamy soil, softening these fiery places. And maybe even like 
in a way you can think of like you put dirt on a fire when you're camping. It's like puts out the fire for a bit. So of course it's the idea of yin activity, you know, to soothe this, but that's not it's, this is a lot. The six months is a lot and it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. So do what you can as we begin because July and August, you're going to have an idea of where all of this is going. And taking action is going to get more difficult as September nears and the fall being, you know, very, very uh, just blocked and uh, really going to have to navigate in a, in, a, in a very specific and self-aware way. So this could look like, you know, schools not actually starting and things like this and what we thought was going to open up not really opening up. There's a lot of things that this could look like. We don't really know what the specifics are going to be. But now that you have these tips, you know, use them now. Start using them now. So start the workout now, start drinking more water now, you know, really clean up your diet now so that when that retrograde hits and things are really chaotic, you're on top of it. And this is why I love astrology because, you know, the, the, the matrix is going to be the matrix, <laughs> but if you know how it's operating, you can get ahead of the game and it's like riding a dragon, right? The dragon's going to come, but if you befriend it and get on the back of it, the dragon can work for you. So I want you to think of this next six month as like your dragon. So get to know the dragon. Ha fall in love with your dragon and get on the back of your dragon and ride the six months out so that when you go into 21, you have not wasted your inner energy on petty crap, right? Because you're, there's going to be, you know, that temptation to waste it on on things that sure you may be right but it would waste your time and your money and your energy and and your spirit don't waste this time you can make huge headway and specifically around career matters we can all make a lot of headway so use this intelligently and if you already have anger issues like get on that Google anger management. I'll make a video about anger management too, but there are so many productive ways to release anger, old anger, new anger, and then turn it into fuel for your creative engine. Thank you so much for viewing everyone. Thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for liking this video. And please, this message is an important one. So please share it with people that you think have ears to hear this kind of message. And of course, if you want to look at your chart, please contact me, email me at info at thegoodwoo.org, or you can head to thegoodwoo.org and look at the services tab for all the different kinds of sessions that I offer. And again, there's always a sliding scale. So thank you all so much. I wish you a wonderful Mars and Aries transit. We're going to get to know our inner warrior and I'll help you do that. Thanks so much.